Time for another episode of The Airbrush Noob. So today, we're coming back to the links and we are gonna start laying out some black. I gotta redo these uh, little grills intakes. Gonna try and redo these uh, in the interior of the cockpit. Clean up some of the other details. I've got my Patriot 105 here. I'm gonna use some Minotaur Raven Black. And I have the PSI turned down to um, just over 15 PSI when I'm holding down the air pressure. It's, it's staying at about 15, well, just over 15 PSI, about 16, 17, somewhere around that. And that's what I'm gonna be working with today. And hopefully my microphone holds out as I am recording all this. And yeah, let's just get to work. So, one thing about these Minotaurs, look at that. See when you close that, little spoot all over the place. You gotta be careful when you're working on your models. I was gonna mask off these intakes. I'm gonna try it on this low PSI and see if I can do it without the aid of, because really with this low PSI, you're not too worried about uh, overspray and it's really just your uh, control of direction and such and so far it's not too bad I'm usually not used to working this low as a PSI uh, some of you that watch these videos regularly and no uh, if I stop talking it's because I'm concentrating I'm thinking hard here. <laughs> thinking hard. Yeah, we're gonna try and get some paint done because we're not doing too much with the brush this week as I have uh, family coming in. I have my mother coming in in a few days. And so, and I wanna disappoint you guys with not having any kind of videos or any kind of, you know, Chris kind of content. Come on. Normally I wouldn't start the airflow right at where I'm going to be working, but because it's all one uniform color, I'm not too concerned about it. Although the color does not want to be coming up for me very well. I don't know why. Maybe because of the air pressure. I gave the paint a good shape before I started this. I really should have masked off the area. Come on. What's going on here? Surprisingly though, like I'm not used to working at this low, low air pressure like this. And surprisingly, it's fairly easy to keep it in control. Keep it going. And then, she just doesn't want to come out at times. I don't know why. I cleared a, uh, a clog the other day and I should have filmed it as I was clearing it because I know some people out there want to know how I go about clearing my clogs. Because I do get clogs every once in a while I do find it's after I've been using the primers that's when I find I, I end up with clogs and I go between using Minotaurs as well as Vallejo's um, primers usually pretty partial to most things Vallejo but I'm also pretty partial to these Minotaur primers as they do go on pretty darn good it's taking quite a while to get that eh? whereas versus if I had just masked it off and hadn't been so darn lazy about this but keeping a low PSI is allowing me to maintain control 
and I'm not really too worried about the overspray as it's really not, you know, it's not too huge an issue. Versus if I'd have had this at about, usually I work at about, um, crap. I'm spraying through this crap. Oops. Anyway, usually I'm working at about uh, 40 to 60 PSI. And that's usually what I'm priming as well. I probably, um, I know like a lot of people out there tell me, ah, you shouldn't be that high, but you know, sometimes I can't help it, man. I'm I'm in a rush. I got stuff to do. No, I've seen lots here. Gonna have to scare the, uh, the driver pretty soon. Gonna have to scare him up pretty soon so I can get him painted. I should do that sometime soon. Debate whether or not I'll use a brush or if I'll just airbrush them. Probably just airbrush them, probably because I'm going to do some OSL. Um, kind of like how I've done with my gra other grab tanks. If anybody's familiar with how my grab tanks look. But yeah, I probably will have to make a video on how I clear my clogs. It's really kind of a, a laborious type process I go through. It's just a process I go through doing it. Just trying to carefully uh, clear the, the nozzle. I haven't used my chrome very much as I just haven't used it much. I often don't do a lot of fine detail work with the airbrush as I'm not that confident in my airbrush skill to you know, attempt to do really fine lines. I know on the Hemlock Fighter I did lightning and I did that with the chrome and even that, come on, what's going on here? Man. Maybe I should be going up a little bit higher if I want to get into these little crevices and such. And as it is right now, I mean, like, once it starts flowing, it's, it's going good, but... It's taking forever to get some color down here. I don't know what's going on. It's kind of annoying me. Getting annoyed. Getting annoyed. Of course, when you're airbrushing, you should always have your little respirator on and what have you. I don't because, well, I'm talking while I'm filming and, you know, I'm uh, risking my, my personal health and safety just to entertain you guys. That's just the kind of guy I am. <clears throat> that sounds like BS, eh? Also, the other thing is, is highlighting this. Like, because typically with my tanks, I highlight the undersides with the gray, and then, and then uh, the color, get a nice dark color. How am I gonna get up into that upper lip? I want to do this sideways here. This seems horrible. That's a horrible, horrible idea. But, no, it did it. <laughs> I win. I win. I win. Get this grill. You know what? I might permanently switch. Keep my uh, my PSI low as I do maintain a lot more control. And thank you for whoever points it out to me that I'm kind of spraying really high. As again, I'm not. You know, I'm not a professional airbrush kind of guy. I'm, I consider myself pretty novice at it, but as long as you keep a steady hand and just work your color, amen. Work 
can maintain quite a bit of control. Uh, whoops. That time I didn't. Talking too much. Clean that up later. Of course, anybody remembers how I clean this up when they do make mistakes, because I do have I do have a little bit of overspray in some areas. Not too much, but I'm not overly concerned with it. Again, because I'm painting this mostly to a tabletop standard, so I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna really fret a lot of these things. I just kinda want this done. This guy's been sitting on my shelf for a while. No love. I think I bought this when this came out. Again, kind of like my avatar, I just bought it like right when it came out. And yeah, it's gonna be a pain to get into those areas in there. I might have to do that by brush. Let's get into the engine sections here. But definitely maintain a lot more control keeping at this lower PSI, which I'm digging. I am digging it. And everybody knows what kind of control freak old Chris is, and I am digging the ability to keep control of the color. The only thing is, is just trying to get some of these little angles here. This is probably dangerous to do, but screw it. I can pretty much only see down it, like one side. Come hey, on. There we go. Let the paint flow through you. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Getting all that inside there. And it's coming this way. The other thing I've been toying around with is uh, doing like uh, illustration work with this airbrush. I've never done that. And I've been meaning to give it a try, just for some, just for some effects and things like that. You know, the airbrush can really help in the illustration work. Oh, that's why a lot of illustrators will work with an with an airbrush. I'm getting kind of brave here with some of these areas. <laughs> I kind of want to kill some of this gloss here too. You can see quite a bit of this. When we had worked a lot of the uh, that iridescent medium onto the uh, onto the gun barrel before. And it's kind of the evolution of your paint job as well. Especially when you know you're not really going for anything in particular. You're just kind of, you know, working it around. Kind of just going with the flow. Feather that out a bit more. Yeah, definitely liking lower PSI. I'm, uh, again, I have to thank whoever it was who told me to shoot down at a lower PSI because I'm definitely liking the amount of control I can keep as I lay more and more color on. Definitely liking it. I'm still sitting on lots of paint here. I didn't put that much in. Definitely. Oh, crap. Way too much out time. Just as I said, I wasn't laying too much out. <laughs> it's usually the way it goes, right? Yeah, right in the grills. See how, like, I didn't even mask that off. And I only got a little bit of overspray right over here. And I got something 
something on my tank here. A little spooch of something. You can kind of see on the reflection there. Oh, what did I do? Here, let's try something really dumb. Let's let's try and get this little grill on this thing here. Let's do something really, really dumb. See if we can't build some tall up there. Come on. Come on. We can do better than that, can't we? Get a little tighter control there. I'm doing this with just a, ba a Badger Patriot 105, and I'm maintaining a fair amount of control on just, just some of these little areas here. Not bad at all. Not too bad at all. <coughs> so, let's get brave again. Let's do this little top, little techno doodad on the top of the tank. Come on. Come on, Tyler. Come on. Come on, be good. Obey. Oh, shoot balls. Almost, almost messed that all up. <laughs> and then. Color wants to take, take forever to come out sometimes. And yeah, let's throw a little bit more black in there. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Make sure the camera's rolling. Make sure the sound's coming out. Make sure my stupid black paint is splooching everywhere. As I mentioned before. Gotta watch out sometimes when those caps clog. And then you close them and all of a sudden, bloop, paint goes everywhere. Pain in the bum. Pain in the bum. Right in the bum. Ooh, you see how fast we're doing this now? Getting really confident. <laughs> Getting overly confident, I think, maybe. And then I'll mess it up and I'll blame you guys for talking. I don't think I could hear any of you talking right now. Blame me anyway. Blame me anyway. Come on. Get some color in there. feedback on the air. <laughs> air is bubbling up. Look too much. But I can do 
<laughs> so the grills are mostly colored in. I guess I'll try and do this little thing again. And then. Oh, too much there. Too much. Let's try it again over here. Sure. I'm not sure why it gives me so much trouble at times. And then. Well, I'm taking forever. There we go. There we go. Kind of fun. Having kind of a bit of fun here, right? Just a little bit of fun. Not too much. It's too much fun. It's just too much fun. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why it takes so long for the paint to come out, like, do what I want it to do. It's kind of annoying. You know, the distance, when I open it right up, doesn't come out, doesn't have any problems coming out. But again, I will say it again, I am definitely liking working at this lower PSI for this kind of stuff. The paint is just flowing very well. Starting to get some sort of clog going on here. Some sort of clog. <coughs> Where are we? All right. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. One of the fun things when you lay just a little too much paint down, you can kind of see it's really kind of watery on the surface or it's running. Run with that. Let it spray it into, you know, some hard to get to areas kind of thing, right? I mean, ideally you don't want to be, you know, laying too much color down on the corner, but sometimes, doesn't want to listen. It's 
so you gotta smack it around a little bit. <laughs> Not that I advocate any kind of abuse of anybody or paint, what have you, but because <laughs> I was just realizing that's how that sounds. Well, geez, Chris advocates beating people up. Well, I do. No. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not like I'm talking to anybody other than you guys. But. You get a little overly zealous at the hitting a point that I don't want to hit. But, I must say though, that, you know, it's definitely coming along. I'm almost tempted to hit it with another red, just to deepen up some of these red points. I know probably some of you are going, no, don't do it, Chris, you'll mess it all up. But I kind of want to. I kind of want to. There's this little voice in the back of my head going, Do it! Do it! You'll wanna do it! Do it! That little voice in my head... I listen to him. Often. And he tells me all sorts of bad ideas. And I do it anyway. Oop! Overspray. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Like, considering I didn't mask nothing off. I mean, you can kind of see some points where there's a little bit of overspray here and there. But as I had shown in a previous video, like, you know, there's ways of getting rid of that. I might have to go back to it because... What was it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wonder if I should do some like glowing inside those engines. I think I should. Leave a comment below if you think I should. Or do you think that OSL is just something that's just overdone these days? It's kind of like a Michael, Michael Bay film. And it's just something that's just kind of overdone. There's just too much of this crap and goings on. And, you know? Do you think... Do you... Yeah, here's a good question. Do you guys think that OSL is kind of like, you know, lens flares and things like that in movies? Do you equate them to that? Is the painting world just caught up in OSL on every goddamn thing. I don't know. Leave a comment below on your thoughts on OSL. Or do you think it's just fine and looks makes models just look fantabulous? Just bloody fantabulous. Because honestly, like I mean everybody knows my stance on lens flare, but I don't think OSL needs to be on every damn model. But maybe that's a bit of a contradiction for all Chris, right? Because Chris is all about the lens flares. Why wouldn't he be all about the OSL on everything? I don't know. I just... It's just one of those things, I guess. But yeah. Leave a comment below. I want to make sure I got plenty of recording space for this. And yeah. Right. 
I'll probably just clean up some of this stuff by regular brush anyway, but it's kind of fun just kind of laying this color down at the moment, you know. Just kind of how quick it's all kind of going down, but I think that's it, kids. I mean, oh, other than these front parts, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do that. I'm probably just going to have to do it by brush. Or I can do it by airbrush right now. close it's a little bit off but <laughs> underneath the cannon here is a mess who painted this thing <laughs> Jeez, who painted this thing Pretty low. Getting pretty low. I don't know if you guys can see what it is I'm laying out right now, but it's just getting some more of this black into these grills. Oops. It's kind of obscuring some of that gold that was there initially when I was laying the gold out. Just trying to clear up some of this stuff. But otherwise, I think this is pretty close to done. See, as you get overzealous, you kind of get all this overspray all over the place. And so really I should stop while I'm kind of ahead. Kinda, sorta. So, I think that's it for now. Because I'm pretty much out of black anyway. And I don't feel like doing any more black. Although this gun barrel now is kind of messed up. Maybe I have to come back in with some silver. Oh, I dropped some. What did I drop? Don't know. Yeah. There we go. It's a little uneven there. Still a little uneven. There we go. It's actually a little too intense. Need a little bit more gradient. Yeah. There. You know what, too? Um, when I did the um, the heat, the blue got lost. When I, especially when I laid the gloss down on it, the blue got lost. And I really should come back in with some with some blue. So I'm just spraying the end here because it's just a little too bright. I know some of you are saying, leave it bright, but I, uh, I don't feel that way. <laughs> Anywho, that's it for the airbrush noob for now. We will work on something else later on. What we'll work on, I have no idea. I do have some dystopian wars to work on. I have this guy to work on. I have my hemlock I should finish, because, you know, it's been sitting pretty much since you guys last saw it. It's just sitting, you know in a state of disuse. <laughs> uh, you know what, I should turn the PSI up when I'm cleaning this side. Let's do that, let's turn this PSI up. Then let's crank this son of a gun. Here we go, let's crank that. There we go, there we go. Some good manly spray now. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's already pretty clear in there. I gotta clear the bowl out though. Clear it out. Clear it out. There we go. So, let's get the bowl out. Let's get all that dried up paint out of there. <clears throat> I know a lot of you guys probably been wondering how I clean my thing, but. No, I've got videos on that. Never mind, you guys aren't getting a video on that. 
I've already shown videos on cleaning the airbrush, or at least how I do it. Is it the exactly correct way to do it? Oh, let's see chunks floating down there. There we go. Is it the proper 100% way? Well, probably. I mean, just gotta maintain the thing, right? That's all you need to do. Let's get some Windex in there. Probably don't need that much Windex, but I do anyway. Now let's pull the hammer back, just let a little bit get up into the uh, into the needle here. There you can see kind of kind of dripping. And then we just spray it right out. I usually work the hammer back. Back and forth, let's do it just so the varying pressure, you know, can work its way over, over whatever leftover gunk is in there. You can see it's a little bit foamy in there. That's fine because with the Windex in there, it makes it easier pulling off that excess paint in the bowl. Like so. You can see it's just fairly clean now. Water. It's running pretty clean in there now. It's really not too much trouble get these guys cleaned out. That's all you can see. Again, like, you know, it's really with these airbrushes, you know, it's all about keeping these things clean. You want lots of life out of your airbrush? Keep it clean. You can see there's a bit of paint on that needle. So let's pull that needle. And yeah, you can see this bit of paint up on that needle there. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'm just turning it and you should be able to see something moving there. And so we just quickly give it a quick wipe down. You can run some Windex over it if you like, but usually just enough. And then the other thing I'll do as well is I'll take the water and I'll turn the air on and you know, shoot some water into it. And sometimes you can kind of see, oops, <laughs> you can see how the water got dirty because there's paint residing up into this part of the uh, handle. And so I'll often just run water to it, no needle. And I'll just spray that till I see the water run clear. Which is about now. Yeah. And I just slap the needle back in. Loosen that off. There we go. Tighten the thread back up. And yeah. Okay. Oh, nice and clean. Oh, nice and clean. There we go. You eat your breakfast off that. <coughs> no, I'm just kidding. You wouldn't. All the chemical and crap in there. Yeah, you can see the water. The water is nice and clean now. Airbrush is clean and ready to go. Just put it away and he's ready for the next job or the next color or the next what have you but that is it i'm done i can't record any more spray water every long time i have to figure out what the little spooch is but anywho that's it airbrush noob signing out see you in the next video next show who knows leave a comment below what you guys thought what i should do next what i should work on next Probably doing the little cockpit dude, right? Yeah, you can kind of see he got scuffed up there. But, anywho, laters, all, signing out. Sayonara. Whatever, I don't know. <laughs>